Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. All right, so in this video, I wanna start off with understanding vectors, magnitude, uh, what do these words mean? And how do we use these things to solve projectile motion, which is one of the first topics we, we look at when we start physics one. Okay, so we got some definitions here. We got, what is a vector? Okay, a vector is represented geometrically by arrows and the direction of the arrow specifies the direction of the vector and the length of the arrow describes its magnitude. Okay, what is magnitude? Um, so a short version, what I like to say is magnitude is just the distance from the origin of something. Okay, but that might be a little confusing because you don't have to start at the origin. And so the magnitude is the distance between the initial and the terminal points of a vector. And so this is our vector here, this arrow, and this is the initial point and the terminal point. And so they could be located anywhere in, inside your 2D graph. Um, and so the magnitude is from here to here. That's the, the length or the distance. Okay, and then the vector points specifies the direction. Okay, all right, and uh, let's see. So here we have Y and X coordinate system. Okay, and mathematically, it's represented like this, the, the magnitude. Okay, so we have this vector here, all right, in pink, and the magnitude of this vector, which is the distance from the origin or the distance from the initial terminal to the, the terminal point, the, the end point, is represented by the V vector notation. So we put a little, a little line on top representing that this is a vector and it's equal to the square root of V1, which is the length of this, this side on the bottom, and plus V2 squared. Okay, so it's kind of like a Pythagorean theorem, okay, but it's not. So this is the magnitude notation. All right, and so vector notation is like this. You have a vector with this little line over it, it means you have this in the X and this value here in the Y. Okay, so we're gonna go a little more in depth with this, but I just want you guys to understand a couple things before I start doing some projectile motion problems. All right, and the sum of vectors. Okay, so now we can add vectors and let's explain a little bit why vectors are important okay so why is any of this important so let's say you uh let's see let's let's say you have a block right here okay and you wanna you wanna pull it from this rope okay so you're applying a force in that direction right you're pulling this block here up like that at an angle okay and so here we have the angle let's say this is a you know horizontal plane here you're pulling it at this angle now this force can be broken up into components meaning that you're gonna be actually pulling a little bit in the F X direction you have a force in the X direction and you also have a force in the y direction, right? These are the components, that's what that means. That you can break up this one single force into understanding exactly how much you're exerting in the x and how much you're exerting in the y. So for example, if I'm pulling this block here, right? I don't think I'm gonna do, um, I don't think I'm gonna do so good in, in pulling it if I'm doing it this angle. But if I reduce the angle, 
here and here and here, you know, I mean, depending on how much the block weighs, if I reduce it to zero and I'm pulling it, I'm gonna be way more efficient in pulling this block because I only have one direction which to apply my force. I don't have to apply it in the Y direction. So the same goes if I wanna pull it up. Okay, so if I wanna pull it up, let's say, you know, I'm trying to pick this block up. I wanna put all my force in the Y direction. I don't wanna angle myself in order for me to have a force in the X and a force in the Y, right? Because if I angle it, this block is still gonna be dragging a little bit on the floor. But if I put a force all the way up, then I'm able to pick this block up and not in, exert any force in the X. And the same thing goes for the FX. If I put all my force in the FX, then I'm able to drag it on the floor and I won't be slightly picking it up every time I drag it on the floor. Okay, so that's one example. And um, let's see, we, we could have, we have other problems in projectile motion that would show this also. So let's see, we have, let's say, let's say I throw a, a baseball, okay? And this is the trajectory and it lands here. So this is your X final. So the X initial starts here, X final here. All right, this is the X and this is the Y. So I throw a baseball, right? And this V naught, right, represents the initial velocity is a vector, okay? That's what my arm did as far as like pushing it and giving it some magnitude. So this is the initial velocity of the ball. So now if I wanna know how much velocity I did in the X direction, right? That's gonna be down here. This is the angle. And how much velocity I did in the Y direction, that's gonna be up here, all right? So you're gonna have some velocity in the X direction and you're gonna have some velocity in the Y direction, all right? Because when the ball is, let's say, here, okay? Uh, we won't say that's the highest point. Let's just, let's just say it's, you know, it, it flies, okay? At every point, the ball is moving in this direction and it's being pushed down by gravity, okay? Here it's moving in this direction and it's being pushed down by gravity. And at this point here, again, it's, it's moving in the X direction and it's being pushed down by gravity. Okay, so at each point, you see how there's a Y and an X velocity associated with its movement. And again, here at this point, you have a smaller X and then maybe a larger uh, velocity Y. So I didn't draw the, the vectors to scale. Uh, we'll probably do that later, but just to give you an example, at every point along this trajectory, two vectors are responsible for its movement. The one in the X that keeps it moving all the way in the X direction. And in this case, we have the velocity up that we gave it, and we have gravity that's been pushing it down every step of the way. Okay, so we have that. And now let's look at summing up vectors, okay? So this is gonna be the cool part about vector addition or the way I do projectile motion. So if we have this vector here, and then we have another vector here, okay? Let's say, you know, we're a boat or something, I don't know, and we, we go in this direction, and then immediately we just switch vectors and we're like, ah, we wanna go that way. And they, boom, and they stop here, okay? That movement that you, you gave it from the initial to the terminal of V and the initial terminal of, of W can be expressed as one vector, which is the sum of both of them, okay? And, but you have to put it from the bottom, which is the initial where it started, all the way to the final. So the path doesn't matter. 
So for example, if I have uh, A here and B here, this is my starting point and my ending point. And I throw, you know, I'm a baseball player and I throw a curveball and it, it goes like that. Mwah. Okay. Now, I'm not interested in where exactly it went. I'm interested in the initial to the final. And that would be the vector that represents uh, the direction in which it went and from the initial to the final. Okay, so the vector doesn't exactly follow the path of the particle or the baseball or the boat, but what it does, it gives you the length from the initial to the final, okay? And it tells you the direction. So it went this way. I mean, it ended there, so it, it's pointing out where it ended. And then another cool feature about doing vector sums is that when we have the same situation here, we have this vector and then we, we changed our mind and we started going this way, okay? That could be represented by the sum of both of these vectors if we start from the initial to the terminal of the next vector or if we bring down this vector, we can actually move it. And so right now it's here, we can actually move it to here. And so what I mean is that the initial is touching the final or the terminal piece here. Now we can do the initial touching the initial of where, where it was at the terminal before. Okay, so we can move this vector down here. Okay, initial to initial. And then we can move this vector here, okay, over here. And so now what we have is initial to final, initial to final. And we could represent it with one long vector that is now starting with W plus V. On this top one here, we did V plus W. Okay, so let me, let me rewrite this piece here so it's not confusing. We have the V vector and the W vector. And so those two can be represented by this one long vector here, V plus W, all right? Or if we move this vector down to the bottom, so we have it like that, okay? I'm just moving it over here so that way it's clear, but really it's, you know, you're just moving it downward, and so this is like the exact picture. Uh, so I'm moving it downward, and then I move this one to the right, and so I have it coming like this, okay? Because it needs to be um, tail to head, tail to head. And so then I can express this now as one long vector, just like I did here, but instead of V plus W, now I have W plus V. Okay? So just an introduction, a little introduction to some vectors. Uh, in the next couple of videos, I wanna do some projectile motion using vectors and, and vector addition and trig and triangles. So I think it's an easier method to doing projectile motion, which is usually not done in books. So uh, let's, let's move on to the next video.